Hi, welcome to another video. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about a circuit that can integrate a signal. So one of the previous videos I did explained how we could build a circuit made up of a capacitor and a resistor to differentiate a signal. Well in this uh, video I'm going to explain how we can build a similar circuit that will actually integrate. In other words, perform the mathematical operation of integration. So to begin with, let me draw the circuit. So it's just a simple resistor and the capacitor in parallel. Okay, and I'll give the resistance R and capacitance C. The input voltage will be VI and the output voltage will be V0. Okay. Now I'm going to assume that the, um, the voltage drop across the resistor is VC. Okay. And I know that um, I can that the sum of the voltage drops across these two components at any given time is VI equals VC plus V0. Okay, So I know that the sum of voltages must, must always add up. I can't create voltage or destroy voltage. So the voltages are in a sense conserved. Um, and I know that uh, VC is related to Ohm's law through this resistor here. So I have a current running through the resistor. So at any time during the operation of this circuit, I'll have a current I flowing through the resistor. Now I'm going to make a very important assumption here. I'm going to assume that when we measure V0 across these two, two nodes here, that I don't draw any current. So any current that runs through the resistor I actually flows also into the capacitor to charge it. And no current flows out. So all So the... The current flowing through the resistor and the current flowing through the capacitor are the same. Now, given that, uh, I know that VC, from, from Ohm's law, I know that VC is the resistance, which is R, times the current flowing through it. Okay. Now, I also know that since the current flowing through R also flows through C and is used to charge C, I know that I can also state that I is the rate of change of the charge on the capacitor. Okay, so therefore I know that uh, VC is R times DQ by DT. Now, what about um, V0? Well, V0 I know from the capacitance law. At any instant in time, I know that the voltage across that is the ratio of the charge that's accumulated in the capacitor divided by the capacitance. So these are just basic relationships that I'm using here. Nothing special here. Now I can substitute V0 and Vc into this um, voltage equation here, so that I get let's have a different a different color. So I get Vi now equals Vc, which is R times dQ by dt plus Q over C. Okay. Now I'm going to make another big assumption here. I'm going to assume that the capacitance and the resistance uh, values are quite large. So large, in fact, that uh, I can basically ignore this term. Okay, Cause given that the capacitance is so large, right, it dominates the amount of charges accumulated, that this term basically is negligible. Okay, And so all I end up then with is uh, Vi equals R times dQ dt. All right. Now I'm just going to um, change this so that uh, I move R onto this side. So uh, one over R V I equals d Q by d T. Now if I integrate both sides, okay, I get this. So one over R that stays. That's a constant, so that's outside the integration. But I that's not a very good one. Even worse. Uh, if I integrate uh, VI, I, I just indicate it that way. Now, if I integrate DQ by DT, I actually get Q. All right. And then, now I know that uh, Q is related by this expression here, but involves a C. So let's divide both sides by C. All right. Divide that by C and that by C. So now I've got Q, Q over C, and I know Q over C is V0. So finally, I can write then V0 equals 1 over RC, which is the time constant, uh, times the integral of the input voltage. And there's the result. So I've just shown here that the output voltage is the integral of the inter 
of is the integral of the input voltage times some constant, which in this case happens to be one over the time constant R C. All right. Now in the process, of course, I've made some important assumptions, and I just want to uh, mention them again. Uh, one of the big assumptions is that the current that that the instantaneous current at any time during the operation of this circuit flows 100% of the current flows from the resistor and into the capacitor to charge the capacitor. No current flows out of the circuit. All right. The second assumption is, of course, that I'm assuming that the capacitance and the resistance are high. So high, in fact, that um, in the voltage sum, this term dominates, whereas this term basically is insignificant. Right? And when I do that, I end up with this expression here. Now, in practice, this isn't a very good integrator. The main reason for that is that whenever I want to want to um, measure the voltage across here, I'll always draw a little bit of current, and maybe sometimes a lot of current, depending on what I'm doing, and that disturbs this assumption. So it's not a particularly good integrating circuit. And what people generally do is they use an op-amp in, in conjunction with this, and that, that allows us to draw current uh, from the op-amp without disturbing the integrator itself. Okay, I think that'll do for now.